Hi all, today we're going to be doing a problem from the Putnam Math Competition. It's question number A1 from the year 2005. The question states, show that every positive integer is a sum of one or more summons of the form 2 raised to r times 3 raised to s, where r and s are greater than or equal to 0, and no summon divides another. And then there's an example, 23 is equal to 3 squared plus 2 raised to 3 plus 3 times 2. And you can clearly see it satisfies all the conditions. Now, how are we going to solve this problem? Well, let's proceed by induction. We have the base case, n equals 1. So we have 1 equals 2 raised to 0 times 3 raised to 0. And clearly, this satisfies all the criteria available. So this is perfectly fine for our base case. Now, let's assume that till n equals k minus 1 we can satisfy all the conditions I'm gonna call them pn we can satisfy pn so pn is satisfied till n equals k minus 1 and now let's proceed from here here's where the problem really starts off so we know we that up to k minus 1 we can write all the integers to satisfy the n. We wanna we wanna prove that we can write k as well. So if k is even, then clearly k divided by two is gonna be an integer, and that integer is going to be somewhere between one and k minus one, right? And so we can say that k divided by two is equal to a i plus a j plus a s plus a l and so on and then we can just multiply both sides by 2 and we get k equals 2 a i plus 2 a j plus 2 a s plus 2 a l and therefore if k is even then clearly we have a representation for it right here now what happens if k is odd this is where this is where the problem starts becoming a bit challenging. So if k is odd, then k minus 3 is obviously going to be even, right? And k minus 3 is also going to be satisfied by the conditions because it's clearly less than k minus 1. So k minus 3, we can write this guy as a i plus a j plus a k, again, so on. And we get k equals 3 plus a i plus a j plus a k and so on now we've got two problems here the first problem is that we don't know if 3 divides any of these guys or not and secondly we don't know if any of these guys divide 3 or not so we're gonna have to get rid of both one at a time so the first problem can we get rid of pretty easily by simply doing what we did the last time right now we have a even number so let's just divide by 2 we divide by 2 and we get a number which again satisfies all the criteria because all the criteria till k minus 1 is satisfied and this is the number and we get k equals 3 plus 2 a i plus 2 a j plus 2 a k now it's clear that none of these these numbers can divide 3 because 3 is not divisible by 2 but what about the converse what if what if ai is divisible by 3 then that would mean that 3 divides ai and basically one sum would divide another and one of the conditions would be broken and we don't want this to happen so what 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 we going to do is that we're going to we're going to basically say if we use powers of 3 over here, if we subtract uh, subtract powers of 3 from k, let's say 3 raised to d divided by 2 is equal to ai plus aj plus ak and so on. And so we this time we get 3 raised to d plus 2 ai plus 2 aj plus 2 ak and we don't know what t is but what we want to do is we want to make it so that 3 raised to t is greater than 
AI and AJ and AK and so on. And the only way that this can happen, the only way in which this can happen is if we say let t equal floor function of log base 3 of n. And if you've done a bit of Olympian math, then you know what this floor function is. But if you don't, I'm just going to tell you. If you have a floor function, and then you have, say, 4.32, this basically becomes 4. Similarly, if you have 5.38, and then this becomes equal to 5, basically it rounds off to the nearest lower integer. And so, what we're gonna what we're gonna get here is that three raised to t is always gonna be less than or equal to n, and less than three raised to t plus one, right? And now if you subtract three raised to t from both the sides, we get zero is less than or equal to n minus three raised to t, which is less than three raised to t plus one minus three raised to t. And then we can factor out this and we end up getting n minus 3 raised to t is less than 2 times 3 raised to t. Okay, so now we have a nice inequality here. Let's go back to the original problem. So what we have is n minus 3 raised to t is equal to 2ai plus 2aj plus 2ak and so on. And clearly, because all of these guys are positive, we have n minus 3 raised to t is going to be greater than or equal to 2ax, where x is basically i, j, k, or whatever, any, basically any one of these terms. And so, from, uh, from the previous page, we can recall that n minus 3 raised to t is always going to be less than 2 times 3 raised to t. And so we can link these two inequalities and we get 2 times 3 raised to t is always going to be greater than 2ax. Cancel off the 2's, you get 3 raised to t is greater than ax. And therefore, 3 raised to t can never divide any of these guys. Thus, the proof is complete. Have a nice day.